Hey there, this is Rick. I hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, I'm up here at the uh, rather nice viewpoints uh, on Uffington White Horse, and uh, we're just out overlooking the uh, the valley here, Valley of Oxfordshire, and uh, I'm going to make this video. Now, I've attempted to make this video about five times today, and I've attempted to make this video probably about five or six times over the past couple of years and so far I have come up with nothing. I've just basically ended up going into a this big long waffle with no real direction and uh, I am sort of determined to make this video work. Now um, as you can see from the title of the video I'm talking about um, escaping the rat race and I basically want to be able to help people to do it themselves. Personally, I consider myself as a person who has escaped the rat race. And there's a few things that I've done in my life in order to make that happen. And I've always wanted to help others to do this. But unfortunately, like I say, whenever I've gone to make a video on it, it's just come across as just so waffly and so patronising as well. Um, I, I just have never been able to publish a video. So if you're seeing this today... Um, it may, I'm going to warn you, it may come across as being a bit patronising, but um, um, hopefully it's not going to be that way. But if it does come across that way, then please understand it's not my intention to make it that way. The problem is everybody's situations are different. And for me to be able to make a one size fits all video is nigh on impossible because we all have a different concept and idea about what wealth is. And um, we're all in completely individual uh, situations regarding you know how much wealth we have in this world and um, our own perceptions of you know being in the rat race etc uh, are all completely different but the thing is I do know there are a lot of people out there who are working either the nine to five grind or the double day shift grind which is even worse because it leaves you tired all the time um, but there are people in jobs they hate uh, feeling trapped, feeling like these jobs are like a ball and chain uh, and, and they, they kind of feel trapped and have, have to do these jobs just to, you know, kind of put a roof over their heads um, and, you know, just to survive. And I mean, that was me, you know, sort of right up to sort of my sort of early to mid 30s. I was in exactly that same situation. And, uh, you know, I was doing a, a job that I hated um, just to pay the bills and you know when I got paid at the end of the month you know that most of that money was gone before I'd even sort of got a look at it and for most people you know they are in this situation or not most people but huge amounts of people are in this situation don't like it don't want to be there and the thing is the way I look at life is you know we've all been given this very very uh, finite amount of time to exist on this planet and you know we're all free individual spirits and especially me I you know I really really feel like a free spirit here and um, you know for me to be locked into this kind of ball and chain situation for me it's an absolute travesty and an absolute um, tragedy you know and like I say right up until sort of my sort of mid to early 30s or sort of early to mid 30s I was in that situation and uh, you know I was not a happy I was not a happy person back then you know I was very very unhappy uh, I suffered from a lot of depression and stuff like that because I felt so trapped and anyway to cut a long story short I ended up being able to break free of those shackles um, and I did it because I learned a few things and I'm going to try to relay those things that I learned uh, in this video and uh I basically learned two major things, which were um, how we spend money and the best ways to earn money. Um, and then I kind of learned how to engage, uh, you know, those things that I'd learned. I learned how to engage them and found that they worked. And hence today, um, sort of over a decade later, I am a free spirit. Today is um, a Tuesday. It's like two o'clock in the afternoon. I've been out since about 11, um, taking photographs, doing the things that I enjoy. Um, and I feel incredibly um, privileged to be able to, to sit here and say that I'm doing these things. But also, um, you know, a little bit of luck came into it. A little bit of um, hard work came into it. You know, it's I, I feel like I've made the the situation I'm in. I've made it. I've sculpted it. I've, you know, I've done the things I needed to do in order for me to be in this position today. And like I say, I want to relay some of the things I've done 
uh, in this video. So anyways, instead of waffling on like I've, th th this is the point in the previous attempts to make this video that I've started going off at a tangent um, and I started talking about, you know, sort of started philosophizing and stuff, which um, uh, is not, I know it's not that practical. So I'm trying, I want to keep this practical. So I'm going to, going to go on to now tell you some of the things I learned, some of the things I did in order to break free from the rat race and uh, be, you know, where I am today. And first of all, just understand when, when I say be where I am today, I am not a rich man. Um, I am not, you know, rolling around in money. Basically, all I've done is secured um, an income that will pay my uh, my bills and that's it. But one of the rungs on this ladder was for me to get myself in a situation where my bills were very small. Um, and that's basically what's made this possible. So um, anyway, let me tell you two of the things that I learned, these very, very empowering things uh, that were a part of my journey uh, into being able to break away from the rat race. The first thing was how people earn money. Now, to some people, this may seem a little bit obvious, but um, when you kind of think about it and spell it out, it kind of makes a lot of sense. And like I say, this was a basically an empowering tool and a, 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 an actual physical tool that I used in order to um, kind of break free. And the basic thing that I learned was this. There are three basic ways to earn money. The first is what most of us do, and that's to exchange your time for money. And is it, it is quite possibly the worst way to earn money because, first of all, your time is finite. You know, you only have a limited amount of time. Secondly, if you stop working, then the money stops coming in. So, uh, you know, it's kind of got two huge ticks against it uh, straight away. Um, so, you know, that's a, it's a pretty... Uh, the thing is, like I say, it's, it's the way most of us earn our money, but it is the worst way to earn money. The second way to earn money, and to me, this is the best way to earn money, and this is the way I've shaped my life in order to um, to, to, to do this. Um, the second way to earn money is um, to earn a to earn an income, whether you are awake or asleep, and uh, not just one income, but what you or you may have heard this term before um, multiple streams of income so you need to earn your money in a passive way so it doesn't matter whether you work or whether you don't work um, whatever you do I mean, basically it involves doing something up front um, you know it will be an investment in your time or whatever it is you do but then that thing goes on to earn you a, a passive income that just continuously comes in um, and uh, like a good example of that is like an author of a book, you know, they will put time and effort and money up front to create that book. Um, and then as the book sells, you know, the, the book goes on selling for the rest of time and then they will get a royalty from each sale of that book. Um, that is known as a passive income, um, you know, whether you're awake or asleep. And for me, that's the best way to earn money. The third way to earn money, of course, is investments. Um, which again can be an extremely good way of earning money, but you've got to be good at it and you've got to be educated in, you know, and, and sort of know what you're doing. And and even then there are still extremely high risk factors. Um, so for me, that was um, a little bit of common sense, really, but also kind of like a, it became the backbone of the way I kind of shaped my life from sort of learning this onwards. The second thing that I learned was how people spend money. And again, this is a very, very broad generalization and it may not apply to everybody, but as a generalization that I've applied to this kind of this this particular model, um, there are people spend money, different people spend money in different ways. OK, um, and I'm going to basically go with three t three types of people, poor people, middle income people and rich people. Poor people will spend their money generally as a broad generalization. Um, they will spend their money as soon as it comes in. And quite often um, they will spend their money on frivolous items. They will spend their money um, because they can't hold on to it. And that is just kind of like the the paradigm that they've uh, they've learned through, you know, through growing up, uh, whether it's through sort of nurturing through parents or whatever. Um, it's a basically a pattern of behavior they will have learned and it be basically becomes a part of their lives. Now, I can give you an example of this. Uh, my brother used to own uh, a small, like a, a little corner shop, little convenience store. 
Now this convenience store was on a relatively affluent estate. It was, um, you know, kind of like a middle income estate. And he would get most of the middle income people come into his store and they would buy essentials, bread, milk, uh, butter, you know, the, the, the basics. But this estate was just down the road from a, a much poorer estate. And once a week, pretty much on a Thursday, I think it was Thursday, he would get a huge swathe of, of people from the poorer estate come to his shop and they would buy sweets, toys, um, useless items. And uh, he, over the years that he owned the shop, he kind of he realized this pattern that was happening. And it was basically the middle income people were generally, you know, buying only the basic essentials like the bread and the milk. And um, what was happening was the, the people from the poor estates, they would get their uh, their their welfare payments and uh, obviously you know th they'd spend their money on whatever they had to do sort of bill wise but then anything left over they would come to his shop and they would buy all these what he called funny goods and you know sort of bat and ball things and um, just little toys for the kids and but they would spend huge amounts of money on these frivolous items um, and it it's so you know t to me that kind of reinforces the theory and and again i know it's just a broad generalization and not everybody fits into this but generally speaking it, for the sake of this model we're looking at poorer people will spend their money as soon as it comes in and they just cannot hold on to their money okay so they're living week to week hand to mouth then you've got middle income people okay now these people will generally spend their money on what I will label liabilities, okay, mortgages, houses, car loans, things like that, okay. So, um, and again, an example of that is if you've got like a middle in, middle income, middle management sort of sort of type of person, if they end up getting a promotion and they get a pay rise, one of the first things they'll do is go and buy a bigger house, a bigger car, a bigger liability. So all they're doing is literally stepping sideways. Um, so th they still end up in that situation where the money that comes in goes out again on all of the things that they, they've they bought, you know, and, and, and all of these liabilities that they have to maintain. So there is no real gain there apart from the fact they get a bigger house and a bigger car which basically means they end up with a bigger liability um, and then the third thing the third um, category is the rich people what do rich people spend their money on well most rich people uh, or again in in this model in this I know this is generalization but in this model rich people will spend their money on things that will provide them with an income so you know not necessarily like investments in stocks and shares and things like that, but um, a lot of uh, rich folk will invest money into, um, I don't know, other businesses, other um, money generating patterns for which they will get a, um, a passive income. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's basically a little nugget of information that I learned and realized sort of was a little bit true. Um, and by kind of weighing that, those two things, you know, the, what people spend their money on and how to earn money, um, I was able to use those two things and kind of inject those patterns of thought and patterns of behavior into my life. Um, and I started noticing changes happening. So those are two really, really important things that I learned. And I know, like I say, to some people, they may feel and seem a little bit patronizing. To others, um, you know, they may might seem a little bit obvious. But um, I kind of just grabbed them and I ran with them. And they helped change come along um, that has enabled me to be this free spirit now. I mean, I'll give you an example. Today is a Tuesday. It's 2.14 at the moment in the afternoon. Um, and I'm out here instead of being stuck in some godforsaken factory or office um, working around probably, you know, people I don't necessarily want to be around doing jobs that I probably really don't want to don't want to do. And uh, I've been able to uh, get into this position simply because some of the things I learned and some of the actions I took and I've always wanted to help others to be able to 
do this as well you know I really really wanted to enable others to uh, do this kind of thing but I've just it's been so so difficult to put across to people what it is I do without going off on this really really big long waffly tangent so in order to escape the rat race what I needed to do was establish myself multiple passive streams of income now you may have uh, passive stream or multiple streams of income is quite a well-known um, term you know you may have heard it before um, but it is absolutely true you know if you don't put all your eggs in one basket and you're not relying on one specific thing you have multiple streams of income it just opens up all your options and uh, it's just a um, it, it's as far as I'm concerned it is the only way to earn a living so um, anyway, there are multiple ways in which you can earn uh, passive streams of in income. For me, the Internet has been an absolute blessing uh, because most of my income does generally revolve around the Internet. If we lost the Internet, I would be in trouble. Um, but uh, I mean, to start with, I wrote a book and that gives me a little trickle of income. Uh, I have written uh, a number of websites those websites offer advertising space that advertising space creates a passive income uh, and uh, obviously the bigger the website the more pages the more pages it's got the more advertising space you have um, so pretty much the websites uh, are a, a good source of income um, and then of course you've got well, when I say a good source of income you know let's not beat around the bush here I'm not a rich man but I managed to get my bills down um, small enough so that the income I get you know the, 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 these multiple streams of income um, all fall into a pot at the end of the month and that pot in that pot is enough to cover my uh, my bills um, but uh, yeah like websites you can write a book you, music I've got a music website where I created music and uh, I sell that I give it away but I also sell it and uh, I you know I sell a few albums each month and that again adds to the pot um, obviously YouTube videos I'm not allowed to say how much I get from YouTube videos but trust me it is not a lot it's tiny tiny amounts but bear in mind I've got over 650 videos so if each video generates a tiny tiny little micro payment over the course of the month times that by 650 and once again you've got multiple streams of income uh, that generally um, fall into this pot at the end of the month and then hopefully at the end of the month uh, there's enough in that pot to cover your bills um, and if you can make the numbers work uh, then you know you can be that free spirit so that's basically uh, where I'm coming from you know um, but yeah there are loads of things you can do to generate yourself multiple streams of passive income it's just a question of figuring out what you can do and um, uh, just kind of making it happen now for me this none of this happened overnight it happened over the course of years um, but it is a fantastic um, uh, avenue to explore and uh, like I say I, I've tried to make this this video more of a summary uh, rather than a detailed how-to because um, like the, the the last attempts I've tried making that I just ended up waffling and waffling and it just not none of it making any sense but if there's anything you want to know um, uh, do feel free to ask and like I say if it warrants another uh, video I'm hoping to make videos that will just inspire people and try to help them a little bit and uh, uh, you know just videos that are uh, gonna uh, just like I say give people a little bit of inspiration or, or some just some ideas that can start them off on that path to getting out of the rat race if I can do that I'll be a happy bunny but like I say it's not it's not easy to talk about this stuff and it's certainly not easy to get all of the information in my head in one video it's just not going to happen um, but uh, if you want me to sort of touch on this subject more and and talk about it more then do feel free to let me know and I'll see if I can come up with a few uh, related videos um, like I say I, it, it may come across as being a bit patronizing um, that's not my intention, but um, I think it is a natural byproduct of uh, a video on this particular subject. I think, you know, some people will see this as a bit patronizing. Um, but I say that's not my intention. Okay, I'm out of here, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day. I will see you in the next video. Take care.